Devesh Patla with the doctorate in uh, management is currently the center director and professor in business analytics at Chitkara University. Uh, he has a vast, vast experience in the field of business analytics and is passionate about both corporate training and academia. Uh, he is also the key member in board of studies at uh, many leading institutions. Uh, he has published two books with uh, an international publishing house in Germany. Uh, he is experienced in corporate tools like SaaS, IBM, Microsoft, Salesforce, Tableau, and is given uh, analytical solutions uh, for uh, various leading global uh, clients uh, from diverse domains of uh, IT, BFSI, healthcare, education and technology, and many more. Uh, Dr. Devesh Batla has created web courses on statistics, business analytics for professionals uh, on uh, many leading online platforms. Uh, He's, he's a highly experienced professional in uh, project and team management, strategic planning, and budget management. Uh, he's also expertised in customer lifecycle management, product management, and channel sales. Um, we are very honored to have such a remarkable person with us today, sir. I welcome you wholeheartedly for this session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it was a very elaborated, uh, you know, introduction, and I'm pretty humbled that I am not that great, and I am really thankful to all the good words that you have said. It is indeed an that. honor. It is indeed my pleasure and honor to be part of such an exciting event. And you know, uh, since this event has a lot of teachers, so first of all, uh, I wish a very, very warm welcome to all the respected colleagues and teachers who are there and doing a great job. Uh, you know, uh, in my heart, I hold a great respect for teachers. Uh, my mother being a teacher, my, my mother's father, who happens to be again, my grandfather has been a teacher. So somehow it has traveled into my genes and there's a Doha by Kabir Ji. He says, Guru Govind Dono Khade Kaku Lage Pai. Balihari Guru Apne Jino Gobind Deo Milai. So these are the teachers who help people to even meet God. So my again very humble uh, you know, request and warm welcome to all the teachers who have come all the way from their different locations. Some would be attending from offices, their houses, managing their work as well. So I am really very humbled to have such a great set of academicians here, you know, from, you know, we have Dr. Selvi, we have Amburuji, we have Vigneshwara, Dr. Senthil Kumar, you know, Indumati, and Shailja, Lisha, and everyone out here, Dharmendraji, Kavyabji, and everyone who is here, I extend a very warm welcome to each one of you. So before we move ahead, uh, you know, as ma'am has told, I've worked with Tata Group, and you know, Tata being Tata, uh, you know, have a great set of values. So before I want to start, I want to show everyone something. So I hope everyone is able to see my screen. He is my first hero after my family, Mr. J.R.D. Tata on his anniversary. I want to, you know, I uh, wanted you to everyone, you know, to see this, that when you work, work as if everything depends on you. And as teachers, our responsibility becomes all the more 100 times because we are the one who would tell the students not just how to successfully lead their life as in a personal domain as well as professional domain, but it is our responsibility to make them a great human being. So again, I extend a very warm welcome to all the respected teachers out there and my heart vouches for teachers. I am a teacher born and bred and the great advocacy of faculties, I really welcome each one of you from the bottom most core of my heart. And I also give a great thanks to the institution for organizing such an event and bringing a lot of academicians together. So my you know, great thanks to IFET and their CSC department in particular for arranging such an event. So I thank you once again. So with the permission of the Honorable, uh, honorable 
faculty members, the HODs, and the organizer, with your permission, we would like to take this discussion forward. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so again, um, I want to start with the famous quote that, you know, it says, in God we trust, else bring data. So, you know, when, you know, I come from a very humble background and God has been very kind that I was able to work for corporates and this is my office and God has been kind that my hard work was appreciated and mentioned on the wall, but my calling was always academia always academia and I wanted to teach students and my colleagues whatever I have learned in the industry in the analytics domain share my knowledge with them so I pray my humble you know worships to you know, uh, Saraswati Mata and we want to start it and my only intent would be to create a bridge between the academia and the corporates so that is my pure intent when I joined Academia, that I want to teach the students and if given an opportunity, my faculty members, that what is required in the industry. And to keep myself updated, I do a lot of consulting and there are many organizations, as ma'am told, in the BFSI domain, in the pharma domain, in the healthcare domain, and you know, in the education domain as well, in the ed tech domain, that how do we use analytics? So I was telling you that, uh, you know, God was kind and I was given an opportunity to visit US and I, you know, I had never thought that I would see a hundred dollar note ever in my life. But once I could see that, I saw that on the flip, which is on the backside of the note, it is written that in God, we trust. They say in God, we trust. And the modern day data scientists say, in God we trust, else bring data. So the data which was small kept on increasing, increasing, increasing and eventually became big data. That is what we have realized the word big data. And the data is everywhere. Everywhere data is there. Why I'm setting the context, it is going to lead us to visualization but why data visualization? So data is everywhere. You go to a shopping mall, you go anywhere you would find data, the cameras which are there, the, the sensors on the either side, the shopping that you do, the mobile number they take, do entries on their system. They call it CRM, which is customer relationship management tools, etc. So my intent today would be that how do we see data and as teachers, as academicians, the intent of this FDP is to gain some transferable skills. When we say transferable skills, and you know, there are a lot of faculty members, Dr. Rajesh is there, Ruchika ma'am, and you know, uh, there are Ajay ji is there, Dr. Muthu Kumar is there. So I'm naming people who are coming on the list on the top. So, Every one of us, including Devesh, has a responsibility to learn something and transfer it to our students. That is what we are here for as teachers. So when it comes to challenges, again, data is a, you know, the world is a big data challenge and data is everywhere. We have to work towards creating a simpler world. If too much data comes in front of you, what are you going to do? you would get confused what to do, what not to do. So here, visualization helps. I give an example and I'm pretty inspired by a lot of books that give an example of a kitchen. So there are a lot of things that are in the kitchen. And you know, every one of us contributes something or the other in the kitchen. And especially in these COVID times, we have tried our hands on kitchen, but go to that point when you enter the kitchen and do not find anything. There is a lot of data in kitchen. There is salt, there is pepper, there is sugar, there is this, this is that. And you start, you know, opening the drawer and closing it and suddenly your mother would come or for married people, your wife would come that said, do not increase my work. If you cannot help me, 
if you cannot reduce the work, do not increase my work. There is too much data already. Do not increase the work. Why? Why as a user we face a challenge when we enter the kitchen, maybe to make a Dalgona coffee in the lockdown, because we do not know where the coffee is there, where sugar is kept, how to take milk, where is the milk powder, and we open the drawer and close it, open the other one and close it, and there is dar, dar, dar happening. So what we want is data visualization, the way we go to a, a big restaurant, and there are a lot of dishes that are there. They give you a menu card. There is a menu card that has been given. That is what visualization happened. But trust me, if there's a, if there's a dal makhani written or there's a you know, butter chicken written, you may not you know, think of those lines. But once there's a photograph of a beautiful dal makhani, you know, backed by a great background, with the butter naan, I'm talking about the North Indian dishes. And if you go there, there's a beautiful dosa and there's a filter coffee. And then that visualization impact is awesome. Then you think that, okay, pictures speak louder than words. Let me order this one. And hand on my heart, there has been no one who goes to a restaurant and sees the other one's plate and ask the helper that I do not know what is that, but get me that. That looks very beautiful. The visualization is awesome. This is what I want. So respected teachers, dear participants, honorable organizers, and my colleagues, and maybe if there are students, so dear students and everyone, I have given a a superstore data set to you, and this has been shared by IFATCSC to everyone at 11.38. You can download it on your systems. Download it and let it rest. I will tell you when to use it. And if there's anyone who is not able to gather the information or not able to understand, uh, I request you to type in the chat box and then we can bring it on board. Now, I shall be showing you a presentation and with the permission and I would like to stop the video so that you, know, you can focus on the PPT. So I'll share a presentation where you would see what visualization is. Since I have been given an honor to have two sessions, in the first session, it is basic of visual analytics. See, there are two key words, visual, and analytics. It is not tough to create visualization. Respected teachers and dear participants, it is not at all tough because there are tools, Tableau, where visual algorithms are there. Visualization can happen in seconds, but trust me, it takes years and years and years of experience and hard work and understanding to get analytics from it. The system may suggest that, okay, this is what you can do. This is what my brain thinks, but trust me, I've been a trainer for SAS in US for five years. I used to tell the participants that SAS is not an alternative of human brain. It is the brain that has created the tool, not the tool that has created our brain. We as participants, as learners, must remember that, which is again one of the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen R. Covey, begin with the end in mind. If we are learning analytics, it follows that principle. Begin with the end in mind or what are we trying to solve for? What is that we want the tool to show us? give those inputs. We will learn the geographical analytics at a later stage in the second session. But before we move on, let us learn what is analytics, how is analytics, especially the visual analytics, and why is it required? What are we trying to solve for? 
So I shall be putting up a video here. I shall be putting up a video here and using that video, uh, that will be a PPT. And I shall keep on you know, telling you, I also request my respected organizers that since I will be putting the video on full screen mode, if there's any glitch or any problem that happens or somebody is not able to get it, I might not be able to see the chat box because uh, you know I will be hiding it for a better view. But I request them to please uh, unmute and tell me that this is where we are not matching the expectations. We will start with the presentation and I shall be turning off my video and I request the participants that in case they have any problem, uh, they can raise their, you know, uh, there's an option to raise hands or send the communication to IFET or in the group and it can be shared with you. I will do my best of the effort to share information. I also request you that if you can prepare some notes and I, again, being a teacher, appreciate a pen and paper in the class because there are many things that I can share with my experience but may not be included as part of the PPT. Hope that works for everyone. So I shall be showing you the basic visual analytics and uh, however, it is good to have some background noise and music, but I request to the participants to keep yourself on mute for the betterment of the larger audience. And I also request my honorable organizers and respected teachers and faculty members to feel free to share anything, maybe during the conversation, and you can stop me anywhere where I deviate from the theme or the topic is not clear. We can take the questions at the later half of the module and you can keep sharing your questions on the chat box so that we can address it and the facilitator will help us. So basic visual analytics. I have shared a context that why it is required, how it is required, what is basic visual analytics, but here, we will use Tableau software. So it's pretty hot. Um, so I'll keep my video on and it's absolutely fine. It's pretty hot out here. So hope you don't mind that I have taken off the blazer. Uh, so, but uh, I'm fully blazed up for the session. So basic visual analytics. So using Tableau software would come at a later stage, but here we would learn what is it. So, respected participants, there's a lot of numbers which are there. Too much information which is lying here. If I tell you to Spotify a particular number, say nine, would you be able to do it? And in how many minutes or maybe seconds? You will go row by row, row by row, row by row, and then spot and maybe circle of the correct one. But in case I do a full effort of this one, you're able to do uh, at a at a quicker, you know, response. How did we do it? It is also data visualization. Why data visualization? When it comes to visualization, we always think it is related to graphs. However, we may be true at a certain sense that, you know, pictures speak louder than words, and that makes more sense. Uh, I think something there in the chat box. Okay, thank you. So, there are two ways to represent a large set of data. What are the two ways? Tables and graphs. Tables, box, box, columns, and rows. How do we create tables? Every one of us uses Microsoft. And the pivot table, which is there in a Microsoft, is again a way to represent data. 
again in a visual form, but in a tabular form. But using Tableau in this particular arena of workshop, we would be working on the, especially the graphical part of it. So the problem statement was to Spotify 9. It was tough as everything was looking same. We used the red color, made nine number as red, and we were able to do it in seconds. Moving on, what is visual analytics? Exactly what is visual analytics? This is what comes to our mind. And as a, as a person who may be a nascent in this field would say, a graph is a visual analytics. For anything which is there in the form of a picture is visual analytics, which is fine. But let us go one by one. So if I say it is visual analytics, you may not trust me, but I want Andy Kirk, who is an author of data visualization, a successful design process to tell what is visual analytics. He says the representation and presentation. Uh, before I move, uh, I request everyone to not waste their time on taking snapshots. I promise that I will give this PPT to each one of you through our esteemed department, IFET. And as a teacher, I would also give you a book, an ebook that would be a token of gesture and respect from my side. It is one of the very good books uh, on statistics, which forms the basics of visualization. So that is my promise that I will share a book as well as the PPT with you. As a teacher, I wanted a book to be given to everyone. So that's a pretty good book and I hope you like it. So it is the representation and presentation of data that exploits our visual perception abilities in order to amplify cognition. So there are some heavy words which are there. Just a minute. Okay, thank you. So there are some heavy words, respected participants. Perception, amplify, Cognition. Now, what are they? Let's move ahead. We will learn during the course of this journey. Let's look at some data. Now, see, uh, just give me a moment. I'll use a pen here. So this is set one, set two, similarly set three, set four, and these are the scores of X and Y. You can say, as a teacher, if I give you an example, you can say these are four classes, class one, class two, class three, class four, and X is mathematics and Y is science. And these are the marks of the students. What do we interpret from this? What do we interpret from this? This is data. And maybe we say that, sir, here I need visualization and Everyone, the foundation of analytics is statistics. If one does not know statistics, do not expect that you become a great researcher, a great person who has a great data sense or visualization. So what do we take from this? Maybe a mean, a mode or median, but as a researcher, if we click here and create this small table, which is here, this small table. So this small table, property, value, mean, what is the mean? Nine, exact. Variance of X in each case, 11, exact. Mean of Y in each case. So what I'm trying to say is that not always a graph, but yes, a table using some statistical interpretation is more visualization. However, there is a way to show. The graph is a way to show, but I have visualized. You are able to visualize what is there. No problem. This works. But this is a better way. This is certainly better way. See, visually, visually, we have created a graph. 
visually. I tell you a shortcut. So people who use Windows machine can anytime select the data and click on F11. You using Microsoft Excel, in case you're using Excel, every time you may not be using uh, the tab view. So if you click on, you select the data and press F11, it takes five seconds to create an automatic graph. But tell me, what is the guarantee that the graph fulfills our requirement? There's no such guarantee. You can try. Select the data, click on F11. There's no, there's no need to go to, search, go to data, go to table. Automatically, the, you know, the graph comes up. But is it what we require? No. We, as a user, know our requirements. Then, basis those requirements, we uh, change the, the input parameters, the x-axis, the y-axis, and then move ahead. So, we are not saying that this data was not great presentation, but yes, it was a good way to show, but this is a great way. From good, to great, the word is visually. Now, what is the agenda? Why visually? Again, going back to the definition that was given in the first slide, human perception and cognitive visual analysis cycle and visualization best practices this is going to be the agenda of this discussion. I would not take much time. Uh, we have time till, uh, I would take 20 minutes on the PPT and then take you to the real data set. Human perception and cognition. Perception, how we perceive things. This is how I perceived. And also, uh, if I go to some books, which is positioning, which is the battle of human mind by our recent Jack Trout. He works a lot on perception. And according to John Lindsay, who also says the perception is the reality in politics, but that's a different story. But human perception. Humans are slow at mental math. If I tell you to do 20, 34 into 72, we follow a standard school process. That first of all, we will multiply two by this, then we multiply seven by this, then add values. But trust me, that takes a pen and paper. But our mental health is faster. We use pen and paper, but trust me, time to multiply using this is, you know, we need to have a pen and paper. But when it comes to money, our calculations go quickly. No, 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 you don't owe me this. And this is what is that. So when we associate ourselves with something, our tendency to calculate also gets much faster. If I do not give you a pen and paper, trust me, you won't be able to calculate 34 into 72 until unless you are, you know, very genius and math Olympiad winner. But if I give you pen and paper, you would do this. But trust me, even if it is money, then you don't even need pen and paper, you can do quickly. So, you know, it varies on the basis of interest and experience into a particular product. And that is where your experience as far as the visualization is concerned would also help you. We are faster when we see data. Trust me, if I tell you to Spotify negative numbers here, Spotify negative numbers, you can say, sir, this is one, this is one, this is one, this is one. How are you doing it? Using the negative count using the negative sign. This is the negative sign. This is the negative sign. This is the negative sign. But if I, as a presenter, take two seconds extra before showing you and do a quick formula that, you know, change the color of the negative numbers to red, you can do it at a much faster pace at a much faster pace. What did I do? Just created red for the negative numbers and you can quickly count the negative entry. But here, when we see it this way, 
we are faster when we see data like this. See, there are three stages. The earlier one, gen black data looking like black and white newspaper. In the next step, I created into a magazine level where I used colors. But here, as a data scientist, as a business analyst, as a researcher, as a teacher, I used a graph using Tableau, which will be the tool for this entire workshop. This is how we can present data. The red entries are speaking on themselves that, dear viewer, I am highly negative. Even if it's a small red, we are able to quantify using the color. And bracket is another way. See, these are small brackets. Bracket is another way in the numbers to show that the number is negative. In schools, we learn that there is a negative sign that shows negativity. But if something is in the bracket, it also shows negative as far as data presentation is concerned. Now, pre-attentive visual attributes. We would have seen a lot of bar graphs. So length is what? I generally rely upon to see that this is the maximum. So for example, these are daily COVID cases. So if I ask you, where do we see the highest case? You can say, sir, this one, this was the day. Maybe an unlocked day. That is a different presentation. And these are the lockdown days. But on one day, the government unlocked. And this is how we saw it. Now the width. The width also represents the orientation. See, we are walking, we are talking about pre-attentive visual attributes. Now, again, there's a word perception, pre-attentive, judgmental, and stuff like that. I didn't even tell you what are the x-axis, what are the y-axis. On this graph, you don't even see if this is height of a person and this is weight of a person. But in your mind, in your preconceived notions, we have been trained in schools to see that if I tell you where is the largest population in this province, you would say, sir, this one. How did you know it? Sir, size of the bubble, a different shape, a triangle, a curvature, a spatial grouping. So these are interconnected. This is interconnected. Where are spatial grouping used? to detect outliers in the data. If I show the entire data in the form of a dots of a graph, then any dot which is so far away speaks for itself that I am an outlier where this kind of graph helps me. Now the color intensity, if I tell you that show me a place where we have a red zone in the COVID area, this is a good way to represent a red zone. Where do we have the highest intensity of you know, COVID succumbed cases? Then you can say a dark one. Then we create figures in our mind that this is where the problem could be. I did not tell you anything, but you knew that these are the pre-attentive visual attributes. And it happens with everyone. Now, visual interruptions make people slow. There is an interruption. You can see the, the video is blurred. The video is blurred. If I tell you to focus on the picture, what would you do? I would closely go and tell me, sir, okay, there is one person lying here. But why it is there? Because it is a visual interruption that makes you slow. What is visual interruption? How is it related in my analytics field? So, respected participants, when we paste a graph in our report, when we create a table in our report, there is an option of paste special. We do not go for that option. We simply copy and paste without even thinking that the graph is not clear. I mean, we by the means, our students, our researchers, people who are learners, they paste it. And what happens 
when we put it, for example, we are doing a doctoral concentration seminar, DCAS, or maybe defending our final viva and PhD viva and want to present on the screen. So there are five people sitting like this. Okay, show. Graph, when it was on the screen, it was fine. But the moment you put it on the bigger screen, figures got blurred. And there, the people became slow. So a tip for everyone, whatever you do, paste a better picture, go to paste special, explore all the options, bitmap, you know, uh, enhanced meta file, and PDF, all of them, and then see which is the most clear one. See, what is megapixel? All the cameras in this world are selling because of their megapixels. What is that? On the phone screen, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty the same. But why do people pay for these megapixels? Because once you want to put these pictures on the bigger screen, the pixels won't break. So as a visualization expert or a learner or a viewer or a presenter, do not make visual interruptions. The cycle of visual analytics. Now, what is the cycle? So we have learned about product life cycle, you know, uh, uh, introduction, growth, maturity, decline. We have learned about fashion life cycle. It goes like a sine wave. Now, what is the cycle of visual analysis? Task. You start with the end in mind. Again, the task. We start from the task. What are we trying to solve for is our task. What is that I want to show? So the participants, so Walt Disney once created Disneyland. He created, I mean, he was the creature of all of them. And unfortunately, he designed, he did everything for a Disneyland. But at the time of the opening of the Disneyland, on the inaugural ceremony, unfortunately, before that, passed away. And his wife worked in the And one of Walt Disney's colleague asked Madam that it would have been great if Walt Disney would have been here to see his Disneyland. She replied that he was the first person here. He was the first person to visualize here. The war is also won twice. The battle is also won twice. Once here and ground. Same goes for visual analytics. You create the graph in your mind and then on you. You set the task here, then you get data, find structure, then you have to develop site, act and share. It's all secondary. But you run your machinery in your brain, the gift of God, and then you use W, which is the gift of human being. Supporting the cycle, incremental, expressive, unified, direct. How does it happen? Change the data and how they are looking at it. Allow people to incrementally see how. This is the first step. If I am explaining you something, I will show you this. Sir, this is what the current month COVID cases look like. Then I do a smart click. So this is what our previous month cases look like. Then again I click. So this is what my cases look like. And this is what the world's cases look like. So incrementally, there is no single view. Had I shown you this, you, the viewer would have been confused. Make a story out of it. Once there was a lion, this is the story. Then there were many animals. This is the story. Then there were many animals and many human beings. And this is the story. So no single view. Revolutionary changes are already happening. So, but you need to use your brain. You, use to, you need to use W. But then do not tell people that I have created these graphs using W. Make the tool disappear and tell it directly remember our grandmothers and grandfathers and you know parents telling a story before we used to sleep and there was a tale 
then there was this. So they are telling the story. They are not sharing the tool which they use. That I read this news in a newspaper or you know this and that. Focus on the meat. Focus on the context. So I have during my research, I've seen that you know research experience that you know Asian people. So during my recent visit, Asian people quote the person prior and then tell the story. For instance, according to John Lindsay and Al Reese and Jack Trout, the perception is you know the battle of mind and positioning is where you differentiate the product in that battle so that's how we do we quote people first however this is a process as well but you know when you go to a larger level or maybe a ceo level or you know the prime minister is telling tells you the story first that you know Perception is the battle of human mind, and this is what many searchers have said. So he makes the tool disappear and directly interact with the data. I hope the message is clear that focus on the meat and then focus on tableau. This is what I want to the user to directly interact with the data. Visualization best practices. So these are some best practices that I've been following over years. And just give me a moment. Otherwise, you would be continuing to see this. Just, just a moment. I think it should be better now. So these are the best practices. Just, just a second. So these are the best practices. Representing data for humans. End of the day, we know that we are representing data for humans. I will give you an overview of this. The colors. See, color also have a great significance and let's not forget it. Maps. In fact, uh, on the colors part, so my daughter is uh, four years and she's very fond of Kinder Joy and somehow she does not accept a blue Kinder Joy. However, the product is safe. And people from Kinder Joy have been smart enough to do the segmentation on the basis of the wrapping. And that is how they have increased the product line. So color has a great significance. She doesn't even take anything blue, even if she's you know, very fond of that product. I mean, the four-year-old girl, imagine what would happen when she would grow a great biasness for colors. And we, we use that biasness in our data visualization that is where we would leverage that strength. Maps and creating dashboards. Types of data. There are people who say a lot of types of data confuse others. But essentially, I want you to read it for a minute. Just I, uh, take a minute to read it. So here, qualitative data, quantitative data, and again in qualitative, we have nominal and ordinal. We are working as data analysts. We would be working on our goal to create a good dashboard. But before that, in the tableau as well, we will have options of measures and dimensions. What are measures and dimensions? quantitative and qualitative again how do we use it we will see but i need not tell that what is nominal value what is ordinal what is quantitative but yes i want to tell you that if there's anything in the position length size we can put it as quantitative 
ordinal is again how do we represent it then i will tell you how do we do it and categorical we will learn in the due course but how do human like their data is the position is more important and shape is less important so we i am telling you as part of the visualization process if there's anything you want to show these are the top three people in the class they would be interested what is the position what is the color you want to show that is also more important size of the bubble that can show the you know intensity i will tell you how tableau utilizes this and then the shape so it's very tough to differentiate a triangle a trapezium a square when it is full of information and it is far off on the large screen there the position the color is what you can use but how to use color as well this is what i will also tell you now generally people put time on the x axis and location on a map so my objective would be uh, for today's task is geographical representation using tableau and it is from the tableau itself so it also shows the root of the process but how do we do it i will tell you see this is a clutter it is like a metro track and then there's a yellow line going there's a blue line going and then all is in red creates a lot of trouble but this graph on the contrary has a has a better visualization impact but this graph has even better visualization impact comparing values you can use a bar chart exploring relationship a scatter plot a relative proportion a tree map location on a map time on x axis where you know you can help see that how things have progressed over time so i'll show you how it helps but a smaller and a quicker example would be a cricket match where over by over update is given on x axis over 0 to 5 5 to 10 overs 10 to 15 and then there is a score that moves on and on and the team reaches the total of 250 that's how you represent time on x axis and then things move there may be a line graph so how do humans like their data orient data so that people can read it easily but how do you orient it here people can use it here people can use it but trust me this is better how is it better if i ask you that tell me in the whole world in year 2009 what is the value if you look here you will have to turn yourself like this and then read the whole world and then 2009 many of the youngsters do this mistake but this is a better way because humans can read from left to right and if it is arabic from right to left but from bottom to top it is very tough to read so it is very easy so this is a better way this is also visualization basics and trust me if you think that rc by 27 value 2007 projection is fine but it is not fine at all look at the legends how are they placed look at the values the way they are placed it's very tough this is a better way always use this one now at times we use colors which are matching these are matching but how do we use it how do we do it create a border create a border provide a consistent background and then the visualization small small tips small small inputs petite things make you a great storyteller then at times people use color but see like this this is a tableau snapshot where you know things have plot columns has some of sales and rows have some of prices and 
is not helpful because human can only distinguish at a maximum of eight colors. How will they do it? Like this. This is helpful. See the difference. This is better. This is better. I can see orange, I can see blue, I can see green, I can see this purple. And I think things will move on better. But here, you can see a blue one, a red one, a gray one, again. Tableau gave an input which Tableau thought Tableau is right. But it is not an alternate to human brain. We know, do not put more than eight colors. For quantitative data, color intensity and diverging color palettes work well. See the intensity of colors. Green, then there's a lighter version of it. And then the difference is, see the huge, the orange one, the gray one. See the difference of color is huge. Diverging color palettes and color intensity. If I tell you that, tell me a place, see there are the profits. So what is this? They have ranged the sum profit, which is if the profit is less or it is a loss, then you make it a red. If it is neutral, just focus here on the left hand bottom of the screen. If it is profit is maximum. This is the color intensity. And then again, the values are also part of it. But to learn the color part of it, if I ask you the maximum profit, it could be here, it could be here. If this is the loss, then the loss is huge. But then we learn what is it, how is it, why is it in a later stage. But the takeaway should be color intensity and diverging color palettes. Use map when location is relevant. District Columbia crime spotting. So everything we do in Tableau is not to create a map, is to get insights. These are the maps. This is what you will learn today. And this is the crime type. It is plotted on the graph. But again, see the visualization, they have used colors and the dots which are representing where the location is relevant. From mapping to insight is our motto. I will teach you how to create it. Use filled, filled maps. See, this is again a function of Tableau where the lo longitude and latitude, see, uh, if you can focus, then lo longitude and latitude are used on this map to show a graphical representation and if it is red then there is a loss if it is a green then there is a profit if it is a dark green then there is a huge profit and it is used on the map of us to represent information now Filled map mo won't work for multiple measures. But we will learn it at a later stage and you will yourself realize that is it helping or not. But see, I wanted to put up a color here. Okay, we will answer these questions at a later stage. So we will see that, you know, so the difference is I was doing a geographical presentation here. I also attempted that let me not fill the entire gap here, but put up a dot, but that doesn't look attractive. It would have been better if I paint it entire green, paint it entire red and, but here for multiple measure, if the size of the ball is small, it has a certain significance. If the color is different, then it has a certain significance. We will learn how does it work. Maybe 
at this stage where we are learning, we can say that if the profit is huge, we can show that it is dark green. If it is lost, we can show it is red. But what is the size? Maybe the number of sales. Maybe the number of sales. See, sales and profit. If I'm selling two products and making a profit of say one crore, say if I'm creating a Lamborghini car, then the size of the ball would be small and the profit looks green. But if I am making say Maruti, then the size of the ball increases because the volume is high and then the profit also increases. So where the two dimensions are getting displayed. Here, again, what I have been iterating, do not use maps just because you can. Again, this is an input by Tableau that map can be used, but do not use just because you can. Too much dots on the screen may not even help. You have to decide if it is worth showing or not. If people are not, what would you present here? So these are the, the red bars are the profit. So what is the level of zoom that we expect person to do? Maybe get inside the screen? No. If you want to show the dots represent, I can't even count the number of dots. Then why should we represent? So you have to be extra cautious here. Mapping to inside. So this is a baseball screen and alternatively you can, you know, you can go back to the cricket if you're fond of cricket. That, that's how the ball has been bowled. You know, that's where the, you know, the ball is touching the ground and then reaching the bat. You, you know, remember that graph where, you know, the ball tips and then moves the trajectory. That's how it is being used in cricket and many other places. Maps don't have to be geographic necessarily, but all we need is to have insights from the map. Look at the map which is there. You take newspaper of any given day and you would find the sports column full of graphs. That's how they've been using. Fastball, average, change up, sailor, curveball. So they are not using graph, whatever they think, but yes, they're trying to make an insight from the graph. So our theme is mapping to insight. Again, they don't have to be geographic. You would see, you know, when the person in cricket, since it is baseball and, you know, they have represented, but when we use cricket here and see that the person has scored these many runs here, these many runs here, these many runs here, and maybe on the flip side, so we can see that Saurabh Ganguly is a king of off since he runs a lot of you know off, off drives. But yes, there's an A.B. De Villiers who is a 360 degree player. He plays on 360 degrees. That's how we present it. But here in baseball, they have represented Jason as a player who scores in this region. Dashboards. They bring together multiple views, but how do they bring it is in our brain. We will learn it on Tableau as we go live, but here dashboards bring together multiple views. On one screen, I'm explaining that how October went, how November went, then how December went. The color can be represented. See, the, this one is Thursday. For this graph, this one is Wednesday. So I'm telling the picture of last six months from October, November, December, January, February, and March projection like this. Then I'm moving to days of bicycle like this. Seven days I have been represented here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then maybe the day one, two, three, or maybe the hours that this is midnight and this is again reaching midnight. This is 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. So from month, I broke down to days and then I further went to 
the hour of the day. So multiple information brought together, but how did it happen? Do not jump directly here, go step by step. First, tell the number of months, then to the day, then to the hour. Make a story. Five second test. Now, what is this five second test? This is a food for thought on the internet that you can read. But yes, human brain or probably the top management or the CEOs in my experience, they put huge effort on the first five seconds to learn the graph. And you as a presenter also have that five seconds. If you impress them, you're able to convince, then it is fine. After the sixth second, they start losing their patience. Then you keep on juggling that, you know, how do I make it simpler? But then it gets very tough. Try to create the impression in the five seconds test. What is it? How is it? It's all up to you. You can learn it. I've given you food for thought. But again, try to mark an impression in the five seconds. Most important view, top on goes on top or so the person sees the graph from here to here see from left to right and from top to bottom most important views go on top or on top left so when you looked at this picture you looked at here which was on the top left we have been trained we read newspaper from top left so that's where we use that legends go near their views they are getting closer to the views if i would have put legend here not of much use legends go near their views avoid using multiple color schemes on a single dashboard it should not look like a rainbow try to have closer color schemes do not make varied color schemes use five views or fewer in dashboards do not create dashboard you know like uh, maybe a vegetable market or a fish market for that matter do not put more than three to four views in a dashboard put years put months put days and put hours and that's it do not try to put minutes in the same do not try to put seconds in the same do not taper down to a huge set of information. We should appreciate that the person seen is also a human being and provide interactivity. So interaction is one such thing where you should leave something for the user to be asked. And it should be self-explanatory dashboard, provide interactivity. I think we have few more slides left before we move on to the data. Again, use your words. The titles, the X's, the key facts. So at times you can use, you know, top three key facts here. Then the KPI, this is the title that I mentioned, KPI performance versus target. Then the X's, what is this X's? You can represent and what is this axis looking like? Key facts and figures, what are the units? Units must be written, otherwise the people may ask you, is it in lakhs or millions or thousands or crores? We do not know. Units must be written as part of the basic hygiene of data analytics and visual analytics. Otherwise, people won't be able to take information required. Remove extra digits. I keep telling a lot of people, do not put decimals here if it can be avoided. There are people who use double decimals. Imagine this information had double decimal. 109.99, 110.88, Imagine the numbers which would have been there. Very confusing. Avoid decimals here. Remove extra digits. And great tool tips. This is where this PPT comes to an end. And you help people see and understand their data. And before I move ahead, I want to stop sharing my screen. And I hope the information that I wanted to give has been understood here. And uh, I am 
and I also hope that I'm not sharing my screen. I've stopped sharing. So is the view fine? Are you able to see me and not the screen? Somebody can type in a chat box so that we get confidence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see you. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, this was what I wanted to share and this PPT will be shared. And this uh, PPT I can share right away, I don't mind. And there's a book that I won't share, it will also be shared at the end of the session. But here, this was the basic part of it. This was the understanding part of it. But where the rubber meets the road is the data set. Mm -hmm. I have given a data set to each one of you and you have seen that data set, which is the Superstore data set, 1.38 MB. I request that if you can open that sheet, if you can open that sheet and tell me, you can use this chat box if, I mean, I hope the users are able to send their content in the chat box, that what do you understand from that data set? What is your understanding from the data set? Are you able to get some meaningful information, a summary out of it? Anything that you can understand, that is what I want to ask from you. You can use chat box, look at the data because we are now gradually moving from the theory part of it to the practical data part of it. And then we would move to the analytics part of it using Tableau. So the PPT has been mailed to the organizers and I would request that they can share the PPT whenever, you know, after the session, there's no hurry. But again, I would request interactivity is the key as i told you the data has been given just to tell you that data set is about a superstore a superstore which is somewhere in the usa and it is a sample data set and from this data set you would have information of some orders there is an order id which is written and then order id has been given some information, how this order was given to the users, how you know the information was shared, what is the delivery mode, what is the category, what is the subcategory. So there are some 20 odd columns and some 9400 odd rows. On the second sheet, there are some returns which are mentioned. Returns, that this order has been returned says we have a cash on delivery option and we have a return option also there. Some people did not like the product from the e-commerce website, the superstore website and they returned. And there are some area managers. Why area managers? Because my session would be focused on the geography part of it. When it comes to geography, it is imperative that we should know that how the geography can be used to take a decision. So I So can you unmute, sir? Uh, sir, I was actually uh, when I expect any you know uh, disturbance that could happen. Okay. So I did. Okay. okay. So actually someone barred in, so that's why. So, so, uh, so anything that the users, okay, I will send the data set again. Because I appreciate that some people have joined in after a few minutes. Uh, so just give me a moment, I am sharing it. So until unless we use the data set, we won't learn that we want to learn. Just give me a moment, I am sending it.
so uh, like uh, I've shared the data set with everyone once again and please download it and just get your understanding from it basis your understanding we would be able to instigate the thinking process see uh, I appreciate that most of us are teachers here and acknowledge the fact that most of you would be more experienced than me but my intent is not to teach you but to make you think my intent is not to train you on a particular tool but also to think that why I am using it you can see creating a graph in Tableau won't take more than 30 seconds for you but how why which are the category so Devajit uh, has suggested that we are unable to find the data set so it has been shared by IFET at 1240 and by me at 1241 no problem. Uh, we can share it with Devajit independently. I will try to do it. But whatever you think is your understanding from the data set, I request you to please post on the chat box. We will use it as an interactive session. And as teachers, I also understand, you know, I was doing an FDP uh, with one of the government institute at Himachal Pradesh. So it's with government of Himachal Pradesh, Department of Higher Education. So I told them that what is that one thing that you found would have been improved as a feedback. They said, and it's very interesting that sir, we are teachers. I said, yes, I know. <laughs> we can't continue to listen until unless we speak or give our inputs that, you know, uh, that does not give us much confidence. So that's how they do it. They said that until unless you bring in interactivity as far as you are involving teachers. So teachers during their course of practice get into the habit of you know, giving their inputs, which is what is highly appreciated. So as teachers, I request my respected guests out here to give their inputs. What is that they think is there in the data set? The session is going to continue at 2 p.m. again where we would learn how it can happen. How it can happen using Tableau, but here, what is your input? So customer purchase interest. Very nice, Dr. Kavita, and I really appreciate you have mentioned that customer purchasing intent. Very nice. Many conclusions. Dr. Rajesh, you're very right, and they can give us many conclusions, many conclusions. Very nice. You mentioned many conclusions. Absolutely. Okay. So conclusion could be, you know, I take everyone to the class of segmentation. We tell people what is segmentation and then how do we create different segments? How do we create different data sets? Your session is almost like that. Very nice. So Debajit has received the data set and said better needs of the customer. Very nice. But your segmentation also helps you in decision making. Now what decision making? You run an organization. You want to get more profit. What would you do? Your decision either has to be a product level that this is the product. Very nice. Product level information. This product can help me get more profit. This is my pilot product. I don't need to advertise for this product. It is giving me good revenue. What about other products? This is one information decision that you can take. What is the second decision? What are the geographies that are not giving me profit? Again, I'm taking you to the class of segmentation that you have been taking. Which geography is Punjab giving me that profit? Is Tamil Nadu giving me that profit? Is Karnataka giving me that profit? Under Karnataka, is it particular region? Bangalore is giving me or other regions are giving me. 
in punjab is it the capital chandigarh or the rural or the urban maybe this level of project decisioning geographical segmentation demographic who are my customers who are giving me profit is it male or female is it the youth or the adult or the old age people jo demographic then what are the other segmentations demographic geographic psychographic etc 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 then segmentation sub segmentation is it tamil nadu then male then 18 to 25 years of age then see the visualization moves from one layer to second layer to third layer because organization is not using tableau because tableau is in fashion or they want to use it or ieft has decided or aict has sponsored no they want to make better decision making from graphs to insights from dashboards to meaningful information is what i intend to teach or make you learn from this session here as many of our respected participants have told that you know uh, this gives us many information but this session or the upcoming session will aim that what geographic decision should be taken right we can take product level decision logistics based decision could also be taken which is the shipment mode which is mentioned in the data set what is the data set saying okay the express air delivery the truck delivery the cost which is incurred what is the profit then i can use the data set for the logistics team as well alternatively you would have seen in the classical case that you know all these e, these websites like amazon and others what they say in the view of the current covid pandemic situation we are not delivering to this zone what did they do they took up a map of india maybe using pin code maybe using lat long and if those information using arogya setu app or whatever have been covered as a containment zone or red zone so zomato would have a map in front of them where they have plotted all the informations related to the red zones and the black zones and using maybe tableau they have plotted that we may not deliver to these red zones the data comes the order comes from a red zone they map it with the existing red zone and immediately reply you cannot you know because we are not delivering so that is where the geographical decisions can be taken using a data set alternatively if one geography is not performing well there is no pandemic situation life is normal which geography is not performing well who is the area manager in that geography maybe the information can come to that level who are the sub area managers who are the sub division managers who are the rural managers let's call them and understand their challenges otherwise how would a geographical decisions would be taken my intent is not to share any expertise of tableau but to teach everyone and train everyone why i use tableau for this decision making my purpose for being if i am on earth why i am here what is my purpose for being if i am using tableau why i am using tableau what is that i am trying to achieve what is my goal and we begin with the end in mind here i will taper down the discussion from the larger analytics to a smaller geographical interpretation in the super store data set if i will also open it just give me a moment so that i can help you for better understanding and then we will move to the tableau part maybe during the next session since this is the basic session just give me a moment
just give me a moment so that I can open for everyone's reference. Superstore data set. However, we can put correlation there, regression there, all terminologies. But here, I just want to tell you why are we doing it is my closer mantra. Why are we doing it? I am quitting PowerPoint. Just, uh, just give me a moment. I shall be opening the sheet for you using the Zoom. I will show you that why do we want so I shall share my screen and this is my Superstore data set that we have been discussing. So this is the data set, sample data set. You may be doing researches where you would have, say row ID, you can keep it as respondent. This is a respondent because the session is also aimed to meet the requirement of researchers. This is the row ID. See, this row ID is unique. This is your order ID. You must have ordered someone on the other form from any you know, online website. This is the order ID. Priority, discount, unit price. As a business head, as a researcher, I would have various hypotheses that I would like to you know, uh, maybe prove or nullify using various information. But what do I do? I have various order priorities here. Will it help? I will see. Discount is what I am. Customer ID, shipping mode, customer segment, category, subcategory, container. But hey, I am working on geographical interpretation in my session. I want to see the geographies that are either performing or not performing. I want to see the geography where I am incurring the maximum expense. I want to see the geography where the maximum returns are happening. I want to see the geography that are giving me the maximum sales. What would be my best friends here? I want to Spotify on the first go. These are my top friends. The region, the state, and the cities is what I would be focusing on. What are these? These are 9,400 in numbers. Everyone would have you, of you would have got the same data set. These are 9,426 in number. The first one being the header. How can I get inside? There is no easy way. In Excel, where I have further information, I would have used. You can say, sir, you could have used. Tiny in my hands, big on her feet. So we could have used the pivot table. Everyone would have said, sir, there is easy. You can use a pivot table. You can put a region here. Then you can put a state here. And then you can see central region are there. And then if you want further information, so you can put up a city here and you can easily get that these are the city wise information. If you can change the display, you go to pivot table options and you go to the layout and then, you know, uh, you can change the options from display to the classic pivot table layout. And then you click, okay, sir, it would have been easier. It is not required. Why did you get into the tableau part of it? But again, this is very complicated one and i would have loved to see it on the graph of usa can i do it using excel no can i do it using excel by spending you know uh, many hours on the research and development and then bringing the graph and then attaching the information i could have done it but do I have so much time in my life? I don't think so. What is the solution? Sir, why don't you use an analytical tool or visualization tool, which is called, the tool is called Tableau. This is where the information comes. I also request everyone to please look at the data once again. And I give you a minute's time to look at the data once again 
and try to get some regional insight from it. Regional insight. Again, we have 12, 20, 12, 55. We will park our questions here. Park our questions here. Since I have a session at two, we will do it. But I want you to think analytically for just one minute, just one minute and look at the data once again and try to get some regional insight, the geographical information. Sir? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Just 30 more seconds and let us see if we can get quicker insights. That's wonderful. And we are back. And so everyone would have experienced that. And this is also, you know, one of the input that has come, which is from Devadhi that more data makes it complicated in Excel, which can be easily visualized in Tableau. This is where our upcoming session at 2 p.m. is going to help. And I request my respected participants here and honorable organizers to please insist and must have Tableau installed. I'd share the link, even if you're not able to, go to Google, type free Tableau download and explore. We can use this data set or I will send another data set for your reference where you would use the data set and try to get that transferable skill my intent is to give you a transferable skill that i transfer to you and you transfer to the students so that you know eventually we as teachers feel happy about it and content that yes we have trained our students and i as a presenter think that i have transferred a skill that they have transferred ahead and people have started learning. So I also request that, you know, uh, just in case we have a few more minutes, uh, that the, if the questions can be noted, so we can take it at the end of the session, maybe the next session, which is there at two o'clock, we can uh, see the entire thing is stitched with one another. What is visualization, problems with Excel, why do we use Tableau and what is the information required? So that I also think that some questions can automatically get answered by the next session. So I think we can take it at the end and the entire discussion which can happen. So for example, Debaji, we can visualize, visualize data by using different patterns in these bars with the same colors. So Debaji, we will answer your question in the next I can I use it on the notes where I want that Mr. Debajit would answer that is it better to use you know uh, to visualize data by using different patterns 
within this bars with the same colors where you would use where you will answer why i want that answer could be a yes no or maybe but yes once you will do it yourself you will have a better understanding and uh, you know what kind of interpretation that you will have and we would like to learn from your experience we would make it a practice based where you would do it on tableau i request everyone to use tableau where we would use and learn from that the time is 101 and uh, i would like to rest my voice for next one hour here and i request my honorable organizer to please take up from here uh yes sir thank you thank you so much uh, devi sir um it was wonderful uh, session uh, i think uh, we have learned a skill from you sir today uh, like the art of uh, data storytelling from your session itself like it had data uh, it had um, it had visualizations and uh, the narration was awesome like we learned that skill from you sir thank you thank you so much for that uh, we did take up a lot of things from your uh, session uh, i think uh, people all will agree with me like one of your uh, uh, slide said like uh, help people see and understand data you made us you really helped us see and understand data in a much much better manner thank you so much sir uh, please kind do uh, kindly do take a rest uh, we are looking forward for your next session at 2 pm so thank you thank you so thank much thank you ma'am but uh, i think uh, you made me more humble i did not was so great i just wanted what i can do but thank you once again i that, that is your humbleness sir but truly it was very nice sir yeah but i really appreciate and see i really appreciate the fact that all my respected colleagues and honorable guests they are teachers and i'm also a teacher so it's just a teacher talking to a teacher and nothing else so thank you and i wish everyone happy lunch bon appetit and we'll meet at 2 o'clock thank, sure, you. Sir, thank sure, you thank sure, you sir, thank you sir thank you thank you sir